My name is Spontaneous, Curious, Unique. I hail from a small, tiny village called Love in the lush kingdom of freedom. Born to parents from different backgrounds, my dad comes from a region known as traditionally typical and caring, and my mom, a completely different region known as awesomely authentic and adventurous. We moved around a lot as a family, along with my older brother, whose name is Dangerously Intelligent. We grew up in the stereotypical lifestyle experienced in the lush kingdom of freedom. Fast forwarding many years to let you guys know about me as an adult, I am an empowernor. I support others to go from where they are at the moment to where they've always desired to be. I cheerlead others to upgrade their personalities using mindfulness, self-awareness, and coaching. I am a proud graduate from the University of It Doesn't Matter. And I hold a bachelor's degree in I don't use it now anyway. I'm on an accreditation journey in ACPDATMA, which stands for Accredited Certified in People Don't Ask Me Because They Trust Me. I am a risk taker. My favorite food is spaghetti bolognese, and I am an ex-professional hip hop dancer. You may have noticed a slightly different way of introducing myself to you. I have not told you my real name, nor where I'm from, or to which tribe I was born into, not even what I do for a living, or what degree I have. Wouldn't life be more interesting if we all introduced ourselves for the unique characteristics that each of us possess? How do you think trust and rapport would be established through this type of communication. What stereotypical boxes would all of you in this room put me in, and those watching at home, if I were to introduce myself the typical way, like this? Assalamu alaikum. Nasikum Allah bil khair jami'an. Ana ismi Elizabeth Wood. Tara bint William. أنا إنجليزية وأبوي إنجليزي من المنطقة اسمها يوركشير. That's where I was born. وأمي فلبينية من هني. الحمد لله من فضل الله تعالى أنا كنت أنا دخلت الإسلام كنت تسعة عشر وجيت قطر في ألفين وتسعة. عندي بكالوريا في علاقات عامة. توني دخ توني قدمت استقالتي. لأن بغيت أصير كوتش وفتحت س... فتحت شركة <تصفيق> أنا مو بعربية ولا أمي ولا أبوي ولا زوجي عرب بس أحاول أتكلم عربي عشان كلنا في قطر وكلنا تميم صح؟ Evolutionary psychologists have argued that stereotypes are absolutely necessary for our survival. Picture, in other words, picture that it's 10,000 BCE, there's your tribe, 10,000 BCE and the caveman era, and you're Caucasian, you have blue eyes and blonde hair, and you meet another tribe in the valley who have darker features, ebony hair, and darker skin. Those days, they were likely to, to fight over hunter-gatherer issues and where to settle. So stereotypes were absolutely necessary for people to, you know, survival of the fittest. I've experienced a modern day, <laughs> I've experienced a modern day version of that caveman stereotyping. Only recently, in fact, I'm lucky to be here on the TEDx stage. As at my first audition, everyone was scrambling around looking for Elizabeth Wood. 
To which I said to them, I'm here, Anna Mo Judah, Anna Elizabeth, Mo Pia. Eventually I caught on and everyone laughed and that's why I'm here today. Through my storytelling, I want to illustrate something called identity phenomena. Every single one of you here has a bunch of characteristics that makes your identity beautiful, unique, authentic, and in fact, plural. All of us have a set of values that when we live our lives by, they might change sometimes, such as faith, diet, maybe even new languages acquired, and those fundamental values that are usually established in childhood remain the same. I grew up in a non-Muslim family, in a non-Muslim household in the UK. As children, we were encouraged to be creative, took care of flora and fauna, and appreciated others through kind deeds and good actions. This is me, uh, eight years old, at Brownie Camp, if any of you are familiar with brownies. My journey to Qatar be began alone as a 23-year-old fresh graduate without my family to live an authentic lifestyle here in Qatar and live as a Muslim the faith of my choice. My value of security was always met and I'm enjoying an expatriate lifestyle here, being holistically respected as a woman. What I'm trying to paint a picture of here is a different type of the beauty of emigrating from UK to Qatar. What I know is that so many friends, so many friends of mine here, locals and those from the region, are really desperate to get out and experience life in the West. Maybe if they're lucky, get a passport. Um, but for me, I can't find anything more beautiful than living here in this beautiful country. <laughs> It allows me the ability to dress as I please, practice my personal choices, and also open a lucrative business. I will raise my children to play safely on the street without having to look over my shoulder every two seconds. Qatar has become home for me for all intents and purposes. Many of you here in this room may resonate, many of you may not, and that is also okay. I'm just being devil's advocate here, trying to tell you guys about the Arabian dream, which is so close to my heart, rather than the American dream that we so often hear about. <laughs> After many years of identity challenges and identity upgrades, I've chosen to, use the, uh, to get rid of the term identity crisis. It's no longer in my vocabulary. And I choose to embrace this identity phenomena for what it really is, raw and unapologetic. I would not be the woman standing here today in front of you all if any single part of my identity was shamed, denied, or suppressed. I'm now at peace with myself and my continuously changing identity rather than scrambling to put myself in only one tiny box. So how about I leave you guys with a challenge? When you exit this room today, and the next time you introduce yourself to someone out there, maybe when you're eating some snacks, give it a try with no names, no ethnicities, and no boxes. After the experience, ask yourself, who is the real me? Well, shukran. <laughs>